Hey, welcome to Plant Summer Therapy, and today we're going to be talking about the Chinese evergreen. This cultivar is called Maria. The Chinese evergreen originated in Asia and New Guinea. The Chinese evergreen grows on the forest floor, so it thrives in bright, indirect light. And like most tropical plants, these plants are very good at eliminating toxins from the air, so these plants make wonderful indoor plants. The Chinese evergreen will tolerate low light. It can grow in low light, but it prefers bright indirect light. The Chinese evergreen is one of the easiest plants to care for and propagate. This plant is one of the propagations that it got from, well, it was a gift from a very good friend who had passed away from cancer. And in the years that I had this plant, I must have propagated probably 40 to 50 of these plants and given it away. This video is a rescue video. This is a plant that I had given to a friend a, well, maybe a year ago. And when I visited, when I visited her, I noticed that this plant was infested with mealybugs. I, I never seen such an advanced infestation of mealybugs before. So I told her I'll, I'll take the plant and try to cure it. In the meantime, I try to replace it, but I didn't want to replace it with another Chinese evergreen. I gave her ZZ plants to throw the bugs off. But when I took it home, I didn't want to, I didn't want to take it in my yard. It was so infested. So I stayed on the side of the street and I try to just try and get rid of it. But there were mealybugs. I mean, this plant was just infested with mealybugs. Everywhere there were mealybugs and all you need is just one mealybug to to make a colony and those things breed quickly. Luckily it was a hot day and the tropical sun is harsh. I made sure that the water that ran off of the these plants ran into the streets so if any of these bugs were washed off they would be killed by the heat of the sun and I was hoping that I was far enough from the house so none of the mealybugs would make it to the house. My plan was to save the plant, remove all of the infestation and to spray the plant down with neem but I know how difficult it is to get rid of mealybugs and mealybugs are very very resilient so drastic means cause for drastic measures. I never done this before, but I decided to submerge the entire plant into a bucket of water mixed with neem oil and a little bit of dishwashing soap. I figured the plant could tolerate it because it would be like uh, the plant tolerating a monsoon or a seasonal flood. Neem oil is from the neem tree and it was developed by India, well, Indians from India. And this neem oil, it stops the bugs from advancing to the next stage. If it's a egg, it doesn't hatch. If it's a larva, it doesn't advance to a pupa. If it's a pupa, it doesn't advance to an adult. If it's an adult and it eats the plant, it dies. Neem oil is safe, it's organic, and it's environmentally safe. It's so effective that Monsanto, the multi-billion dollar international conglomerate, tried to get this tree patented so nobody else could use it to deter pests. Then I use a little bit of dishwashing soap because soap is a surfactant and insects are ex well, have exoskeleton that have passive uh, respiratory systems and soap will interfere with their respiratory system. I also soaked the stalks that I couldn't uh, save from the plants and my intention was to propagate them but um, I don't think well none of them survived. And even though most of the plants was submerged in the neem soap uh, mixture, I didn't want any survivors of the mealybugs to survive anywhere on the plant. So I thoroughly sprayed down the leaves of the plants with neem oil. I had originally wanted to leave this plant soaking for only a couple of hours, but life is busy. So I think I left it overnight. So it's probably stayed soaking in this bucket for about 10 to 11 hours. Uh, in the morning, I took it out of the bucket and I made sure I thoroughly drained it. And I even tilted to a 45 degree angle to make sure that, uh, well, because of the perch water table, 
to make sure as much water came out of it as possible because I figured it's been soaking long enough. Then I put a layer of sand. I didn't pat it down, I just put a layer of sand in case there were any surviving bugs in there. I didn't want them to go into the pot. I didn't want to climb out of the pot to go into the leaves. I wanted to make this the most hostile environment for any mealybug. And then I put this plant under a table in the middle of my courtyard so it would get bright indirect sunlight from every direction and it it actually it looks good now the next day or a couple of days later I took the plant out and I ex inspected the plant and there weren't any mealybugs and I guess I could have just left the plant as it is but um, I figured this plant had been growing a lot and it's been in this pot probably for two to three years so it was probably root bound and I was correct. This plant was very root bound. There was probably, well there was hardly any soil left. The entire pot was basically roots. I carefully took apart the root ball and I try to be as gentle, gentle as possible. I try to separate these uh, plants but it was impossible because the roots were too interwoven into each other so I had to cut these uh, into separate plants. I used to be very gentle with root balls before but for aglaminas or Chinese evergreen these plants are very hardy they're very sturdy I mean cutting the roots will slow them down but um, only for a little while these plants are very aggressive and I'm sure in a tropical setting these plants will be probably invasive. I no longer put a layer of gravel on the bottom of the pots because of the perched water table. My soil recipe is two parts of potting mix, one part of perlite for drainage and aeration, about a half a part of uh, wood chips or orchid bark well to help uh, maintain some of the nutrients so it doesn't all wash out with the drainage water. For those of you who are unaware of the perched water table, I urge you to watch YouTubers Danielle Tells or Betsy Begonia. They made excellent videos explaining the perched water table and this is why probably a lot of our plants have died because for generations we were taught the wrong way to pot plants. I've done my own experiments with the perch water table but I'm hesitant to make a video on it because uh, Betsy Begonia and Danielle Tells, their videos were very good. Okay back to my video. The final layer or the top layer of the soil that I use is just potting soil because after frequent watering vermiculite or perlite because they're very porous they'll float to the top and I don't want a moist layer that will attract gnats. And then I put a layer of sand and when you water the pot with a little sand in it, it'll mix up with the top layer, making a little bit more denser soil layer to stabilize the plant and to keep the dirt from dusting off. Dirt is the wrong word to use. Soil. Dirt is dead. Soil is alive. Soil, which is, you know, the dirt inside of the, the potted plants, actually has nutrients and microorganisms that help break down garden material or compost into elements that the plants can take up. Dirt is just dead space. Unfortunately I use the terms or the words interchangeably and well technically if the soil dusts off it's dead. You know it doesn't have any microorganisms microorganisms in it. Ah, semantics. I was able to make three plants out of that one plant and as usual I hose these plants down to make sure I wash off any matter that could be a haven or attraction for any parasites or infection. Then I spray down these plants with a mixture of neem oil and water. Uh, when plants are handled, especially handled roughly, they'll send out pheromones that would, uh, well, to warn other plants that something's happening. 
Uh, unfortunately, these pheromones sometimes attract parasites. These are all of my Chinese evergreen propagations. These are the aglaonemas. Uh, in here, these, these are actually a couple months later. Um, this is one of the plants I propagated and it's doing well. In fact, all of the plants that I propagated, they have shoots coming off from the bottom. I put these plants in the front garden so I can keep an eye on it. And because of the angle of the sun, they're beginning a lot of a uh, lot more sun than they're used to. So some of these are having little brown edges, but actually these plants are thriving well. This is another one of the plants that I propagated from the the infected plant, and it already sent up shoots. And here's another shoot that's coming well. I had to take this plant and another Chinese evergreen out of my house because a new kitten that I found in my patio likes to play with aglaonemas, uh, Chinese evergreens, and ch Chinese evergreens are very toxic to plants. But when I took this plant out, this plant had flowers everywhere. And usually the, they have flowers, they don't have these seeds. But now this plant has uh, seeds everywhere. So I'm kind of uh, excited to try and propagate these seeds or germinate these seeds to see what kind of plants hopefully I'll get some kind of mutation that you know that I'll have a plant that I you know didn't have this is another one of the plants I took outside and it's in a perfect spot look at this it, it's just exploded it's the growth I wish I could keep this in my house because could you imagine how fresh it'll make the air in my house by uh, purifying all the toxins Anyway, these are my aglaonemas. Darn, I was trying to make shorter videos, but I, I kind of enjoyed making videos and I love talking to you guys as, as if you were friends right next to me. And I appreciate you watching the videos. I appreciate you commenting. I, I love talking to all of you. And I, I have a really good group of people that, that likes to chat about plants. Thank you, everyone. Um, I have, uh, I made a friend a couple of months ago. Um, he asked me to do a shout out and um, he was one of my first friends that I made on YouTube. Um, you know, there's a bunch of friends that I've talked to and I wish I could say hello to everyone. Maybe I should. But anyways, this um, shout out is for um, my friend who uh, I don't know how to make a link, but this is his um, YouTube channel. If you guys have a chance to check him out, it shows about uh, life in Galway, um, Ireland, and it's a very picturesque city. Uh, I love seeing exotic places. Um, anyways, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for visiting. Aloha.